Hi, this is Harrison Ken from WTI, and we're going to show you how to initially set up a WTI unit. Did you notice how I put your name first? You did, and that confuses viewers because they don't know who's Ken and who's Harris. No, because I put the non-important person first because I, the most important person goes second. So, of course, I put myself second. I guess it's age before beauty on this one. It absolutely is. So I am much younger than you, so I, I know much more than you. Anyways, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to connect to a brand new WTI box out of the unit. And basically, the only things you need to know is the computer and the WTI box need to physically be on the same network. And out of the box, the WTI unit's address, default address, is 192.168.168.168. And the username and password are both super, super. And let's get this show on the road. Basically, if you're in Linux or in some Unix-oriented thing, which is easier to show, let's type in the screen command. And then basically, you're in its own different shell. So we're going to set up the IP address of this computer to 192.168.168.170. And I'm going to add my default pseudo address. And now we're actually going to SSH into the unit to its default address. Harris, you, you talk way too much. Well, I'm just letting you do this because I'm thinking I'm from a Windows to... perspective how much more difficult this oh, is. It is much more difficult. But it's basically the same property. So right now we're into the WTI unit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change the default password and we're going to modify SSH a little bit. And we're also going to set the actual IP address that you want. So to, to change the user, we're going to hit slash F which goes into the system parameters, which I don't know why slash F goes into the system no parameters. Idea. But slash that's S okay. might have been a little better, but slash F is system parameters and user directory, yeah. which is where we're going is option one. Well, considering we've been in business for f over 40 years, slash F came in the mists of time, so that's probably why they do it. It's kind of stayed that So way. we're going to modify the default user because we're going to get rid of it because we just don't want a super user there. So we're just going to name it super919, and then we're going to change the password to something different. Is it Super 919? Absolutely, because it's easy to remember. I'm an engineer, so I can't remember <laughs> things that well. Didn't get crafty with it? No, no, no. So we're going to escape out of there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the network parameters. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the SSH access. And then we're going to change the security level from normal to high. And basically what that does is it uh, disables the, uh, the historic Diffie-Hellman and enables the secure elliptic. Uh, Diffie-Hellman key exchange. It's not that important, but you know, we're just worried by default out of the box that a lot of people may have older SSH programs and then we'll be able to connect. And since we're able to connect, let's get rid of the old stuff and, and put in the more secure stuff. And what you can also do if you wanted to was we can enable the web access, but that's another issue for another video because that's... Uh, oh, if you're going to do something other than HTTP, it's a little bit more complex. And we can go in depth on that on another video. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to change the IP address of one of the actual ones we're going to be using. So let's set the IP address to 0 0.155. And while we're at it, we're going to change the default gateway. I guess you should type that right. Mm, that might help. And we're going to get in there. And then we're going to escape and escape out. Now right now it kind of looks like it's hung, but it's not. Because right now we've changed the... Uh, IP addresses. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump out of that screen program and get back into our original one. And I'm going to set the IP address of this machine properly. Uh, we're going to set it to uh, IPF config. EN5. And the reason we're doing this is because now that you signed a new IP address to this device, you have to log in with that new IP address to be able to connect to it. So yes. our last session while it was saving, it technically changed those parameters so you're no longer able to get in with and that old IP address. And I have to remember the 919 address. Yeah. And let's get the IP address. So now we're going to SSH into the WTI unit with the new IP address. And it's going to ask me to accept those keys. And we're going to type in our new uh, password. And now we're in. And you can double check the version of the, the software. And the funnest command is the JSTAR, which tells you just about everything in the unit. It basically tells you the version numbers of some of the open source stuff we use internally in there. And to actually log out, what you want to do is hit slash X. 
And hopefully we haven't bored you and put you to sleep, and we will talk to you on another video. Hopefully. We'll see. Yeah. I didn't really ask for an opinion, but since you There's put it in, I really appreciate it. There's always one available. Okay, thanks so much. We'll talk to you later. Bye.